Tēnā koutou katoa and welcome to Harvest TV. We're delighted to bring you the show produced right here in Rotorua, coming to you today from Lake Tarawera. Today we're going to hear how the tragedy of the loss of a parent in childhood has now become a springboard through faith in God to help other youth who are struggling through tough circumstances. And we're also going to drop in on a group who are doing something very special every week to serve their community. Plus, we're going to meet an inspiring woman who overcame severe childhood adversity to bring hope and faith to many. Today's theme is the Great Commission. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we've been entrusted with the privilege of taking the wonderful message of God's love and salvation to a world that's lost and separated from God. Jesus came into this world on a rescue mission. He willingly went to a terrible death on the cross to pay for our sins and to make the way that every one of us can be restored to God. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day and commissioned his followers to take the good news to every people group on the face of the planet. God wants his lost children found. The Gospel of Luke records a parable that Jesus told about a man who invited many people to a great banquet. Those originally invited all made excuses and declined the invitation. The master then commanded his servants to go out and invite many who were less well off to come. Many came, but there was still room. So the master told his servants to go further out again to the country roads and lanes and make them come in, urging them with these words, so that my house will be full. This is a picture of the Great Commission. We are sent out to extend an invitation on behalf of our Master Jesus for people to come and feast with Him in His kingdom. And we need to repeatedly go out and go out further so that our Master's house will be full. Today we're going to hear from some great people who have received the good news and are taking it to others. Mm. Sue Bedell was separated from her parents as a young girl but encountered the love of God that's transformed her life and taken her on an adventure of faith where she's led many people to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We're also going into the community and to meet up with a wonderful team at Community Kai who provide a three-course meal every week for their community. But first we're going to hear from Julian as he shares of his faith journey a journey of finding his life purpose as he encountered the love of Jesus. So let's hear from Julian. Kia ora, my name is Julian Ritikoko. I am from Wanyomata, but now live in Horohoro, Rotorua. I am married and have two children. My profession is a farm consultant. What I enjoy most in life is spending time with my family and being on the farm. This is my life story, my struggles, my triumphs, my past and my new future, which is available to all who believe in Jesus. I had good hard-working parents. Uh, my dad was a, was a hard-working man. He worked at the meatworks. Uh, my mum worked at a sewing factory. Um, so all my life, you know, I've always had um, good support of hard-working parents around me. But because they worked so much, um, I left a lot of time on my own, uh, me and my younger brothers. So without adults around, uh, there's a lot of uh, entertainment that we had to come up with ourselves. Just out of the blue, uh, my father passed away, which turned my world upside down. Um, I've always sort of had him there for support, to, to talk to, and all of a sudden he was gone. So I pretty much just quit school. So I stayed home, I helped look after my mum and looked after my younger brothers until she got back on her feet. But it just felt like in a, in a matter of six months, I went from 17 to 40 years old. me decide to follow Jesus well it wasn't an overnight decision and basically when I turned up to harvest a little over a year ago uh, I only went there to support my wife because she was she needed to find God so I went there just to tag along to support her and it was only after continually turning up every Sunday and finally switching my phone off and listening to what uh, the pastor had to say that I started to 
connect things up for myself because my view on Christianity prior to coming to Harvest was I always thought church was phony. I always thought it was for weak people or needy people. And I always considered myself a strong man that I can handle this world on my own. But it's funny how God has a way has his way with you. And as each Sunday I turned up, he slowly just worked at me and worked at me and he broke me down and he broke me down. feeding my cows one day and I was out on the farm and it was a day like today and the clouds parted and the sun shone through and I always had a thing about the sun shining on me I always seen that as a, a good omen or, 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 or a good a good vibe and I had these thoughts about what I've been learning at church and the sun ray was a positive sign that yes I was following the right path the Great Commission has affected me as as being a, a mentor or just an older brother for a lot of uh, young, younger Māori and even Kiwi um, teenagers that are sort of finding it hard to find their place in the world um, due to maybe a lack of a father or a, or a good positive role um, model in the home. For me, when I decided to come and make the choice, now I had two options, live a life without Jesus or live a life with Jesus. And being the sceptical person that I was, I made sure I did the math. And I can tell you right now, I wouldn't want to live a life without Jesus. And that's just the truth. Welcome everyone. For those viewing at home and those here in our congregation, today I'm speaking about the theme that's closest to God's heart, and that is bringing people to himself. It's the theme of the Great Commission. Sadly, sometimes we see that it's the great omission, that people fail to reach out and bring others to Jesus. So my definition today, as we think about this theme, missions is bringing, helping bring people to Jesus. There's uh, my, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is, is four men carried a paralyzed man to Jesus. And they got him into, with difficulty, but they got him there and Jesus healed him and forgave the man's sins. And so uh, that's a great definition of missions helping carry or bring people to Jesus. And when we think about why missions, why should we do it? These, these are the words that Jesus uh, is recorded in Matthew 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And here we can see Jesus commands us to go. Why missions? Because Jesus said go. And uh, with uh, someone has said the first two letters in the word gospel, the good news, is the word go. Go to people and tell them the good news. And we can see here, uh, uh, this is Jesus' last command or the great commission. And someone has said we should give First priority to the last words of Jesus. And we know in John chapter 20, it says Jesus came to the uh, uh, disciples after he had risen from the dead. And it says he, he greeted them. They were shocked and yet full of joy. And this is, what, uh, this is what happened in John chapter 20 and verse 21. It says, I'll just find it. It says John chapter 20 and verse 21. It says, Jesus again came to me and said, peace be with you. When Jesus comes into our life, we receive peace. He said, peace to his disciples. And then this is what he said, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And so we are sent ones. We are sent even in the same way the Father sent Jesus to come into the world for us. He has said, Jesus said, I am sending you in the same way. You can take the good news out to others. And when we think about Mission, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Here's a key verse of missions. 
Jesus said this, this is after he rose from the dead. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, he said, and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so we see, here's the, here's the scope of missions. It's firstly where we live, local missions. Secondly, he said it's the surrounding district, uh, Judea and Samaria. And uh, thirdly, it says to the ends of the earth. And so for us, missions here in our church, we say local missions is about, for us, it's reaching out to Rotorua. And we do that in lots of ways. Our regional missions, we partner with other churches in our, in our locality and, and with, through our movement, helping reach the gospel out to others. Especially for us, of course, it's India. And for us, that we can reach out to others and help them come help carry them, help bring them to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Saviour. The community is invited to dinner on um, a Thursday night at um, Linton Park Community Centre and um, and everyone's invited, um, it's a free meal, they get a, um, a soup, a main and a dessert, it's just open to the community. The community, people coming, sharing, having a good laugh, um, yeah, meeting new people each time and the volunteers and you know, a lot of us become like a family. I think you know, people need to reach out to each other, give each other a hand. You see there joy, so it gives you joy, you know, um, and you, you know it's a worthwhile cause. It's good to see the same regulars coming in, um, it's good to see some new faces every week, and um, it's just good comradeship with the rest of the volunteers. Well, yeah, um, it's definitely um, people coming and sharing, and as you can probably hear now we're inside in the background. People are talking, the families um, having a nice dinner and the warm and um, they're meeting new people. We've had a few families come all walks of life and um, and it you know they feel like they're a part of something and the kids enjoy themselves. It's um, yeah, it's wonderful. And we did a bit of this. And then came it, it came, and, and now at the moment we've been going like this, I don't know what I'm going to cook, I don't know what I'm going to cook, so, because we've got so much choices at the moment, and um, it's been great, but yeah, and, and there's good support out there as well in the community. Well, as, as a volunteer, like I say, we, we have a good laugh amongst ourselves, um, and you can also learn some skills if you come in you know, and want to learn how to cook or something like that, we're more than willing to help out teach you those things. Um, and as a participant in the meal, um, as you've probably got on tape, uh, the meal are beautiful, um, very um, you know, tasty and nutritious. Well, it's obviously feeding um, people, but uh, they're also it's building up a community, and hopefully, you know, there's some. Uh, I know there's a number of people here tonight that help um, in different ways in the community, and they'll be talking to each other about, you know, getting help and um, where they need it. Well. I, I don't work, um, I'm medically retired, so I have time up my sleeve, um, and I like to work on the pol- policy of um, pay it forward or give back a little. Either way, it's really the same thing to me. Um, people have helped me out over the years, so I like to help out others. It's the same thing, you see you, you see their joy, so it gives you joy, you know, um, and you, you know it's a worthwhile cause. Yes,
godly testimony that's activated by faith. Because Hebrews 11, 1 says, by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. Faith. Well, the most important thing is how much God loves us. He just cares about us so much. He sacrificed his son so that he could have relationship with his creation. Father, he gives us an identity. He says, I'm your dad, you're my kids, and I'm going to lead you, guide you, protect you, care for you, heal you. I'm Jehovah Rapha. Some key points is her amazing faith that she has in the Lord and nothing is unstoppable for her. You know, with her faith in the Lord, you, anything's possible. I mean, she, she had that um, separation from her mother and her father and lots of times where she was on her own and always the Lord stepped in for her. So, yep, just her amazing faith with the Lord and her love for the Lord. Yep. But you receive the spirit of sonship and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Well, how my life relates to the Great Commission is what is close to God's heart is close to my heart. And people are so precious. And God has just given me such a love for people. And it's, it's free. His love is free. So wherever I go, I'm his feet. I'm his hands. I'm his mouthpiece. God doesn't tell us to go out and witness. He tells us to be a witness that our life, wherever we go in this world, we take the presence of God with us. I miss church because I wash my hair. I couldn't do a thing with it. It turned out like this. It's natural. Okay. So I decided to have church all by myself and let the family go to church without me. And I sat in the chair and I thought, now let's see, what would they be doing in church? Okay, singing a song. So I stood up, sang a song. Then I had a prayer. I thought, might as well skip the offering. And then I thought, now I need a sermon. And I picked up a magazine and it was about the Holy Spirit. This is a great testament tonight of a person with faith. She came from no faith at all, not a family that was in a Christian environment, yet the Lord saw her the day she was born. He had a plan for her. And this is a classic example of that, where all her life was planned and it just happened and, and the Lord was there even before she had faith. And that's made her a great woman of faith. And so now um, her world is unstoppable. Abiding in his presence, everything in life that you refer to, the word of God, that you love God, you love his word. Then verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my rock, he's my fortress, he is my God, in him I will trust. Well, our future is a surprise because every part of our life, you know, has been something different. We're thinking that maybe we'll be reaching into Asia, but this is something that God will have to open the door for. But in the meantime, we just go where we're received. I'm sure you were inspired as you listened to Susan share her faith journey. I love the way she sums up her love for God by saying, what's closest to God's heart is closest to mine. That passion has taken her and her husband to the remote highlands of Papua New Guinea and to many localities in Australia and recently, of course, to New Zealand and here to Rotorua. And it was great to meet up with Colin and the team from Community Kai who do such an awesome job putting on a great meal for the community. And I'm sure you were moved as you listened to Julie and tell his story of childhood loss that has now been turned around to help others come to a place of believing and belonging. Mission exists wherever there are people who don't yet know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour, which means that the Great Commission needs to be outworked right where we live and work in our own communities. Matthew chapter 13 verse 37 tells us that Jesus sows us as good seed into his harvest field of the world. Our lifestyle and our words convey the gospel to our families and our friends and neighbours. We have the privilege and responsibility of being ambassadors for Jesus. And we're also called to help outwork the Great Commission beyond our own locality and overseas. 
We can often best do this by partnering with other churches and mission agencies to support the work that they're doing. We encourage you to go on a short-term mission trip. It may well be a key milestone in your own faith journey. And we also encourage you to get involved in supporting your local church as it reaches out to your community. We want to thank you for joining us today. And as we close, it's our privilege to pray with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for calling us to yourself and giving us the privilege of reaching out to others with the good news of your love and your salvation. Help us to be aware of those you want us to speak to. And Lord, we pray that you'll give us courage and joy as we do this. We ask and pray this in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so from my wife and I, and on behalf of the churches of Rotorua, remember that in God, the best is yet to come. God bless. Became a servant, no riches, no harm. Became a man, in appearance of that which you made, you humbled yourself. Under your 